Good morning. Welcome to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is so good to be here. Happy Reformation Day uh, to all of you. It was on October 31st, 1517, that Martin Luther posted the 95 Theses in Wittenberg beginning a chain of events that uh, changed the course of history uh, forever. And for those of us uh, who are identified as Lutherans, um, we, we celebrate the way that God worked through that change to bring us to where uh, we are today. And so again, happy Reformation Day uh, to all of you. Uh, a few things to lift up before we begin. Uh, it's our tradition here on uh, uh, Reformation Day to use that as the day in which we confirm uh, young people in our congregation who have completed uh, their confirmation instruction and that'll be happening today six of our young people uh, will be confirmed uh, through the rite of affirmation of baptism uh, at the 1030 service so that'll be exciting for sure 
A lot of exciting things going on at Our Savior's. Harvest Fest is this week, Friday and Saturday. And Saturday is when the takeout lunch uh, will be happening. And so hope you uh, are able to take part in that. Um, uh, next week is All Saints Sunday. And that is the tradition in the church in which we um, uh, remember all of the great cloud of witnesses. Um, um, men and women uh, through the ages uh, who have uh, witnessed the faith through their lives and in particular uh, we use uh, All Saints Sunday as a chance to to name and, and lift up uh, those who have died over the past year uh, within the service. We have put outside the, the sanctuary door here um, a, a book of names in which you are invited to write down a, a name of of someone maybe in your family or you love uh, that has passed away over this past year and we would certainly include them as we name those names uh, next Sunday. Also included as part of that service is we will uh, come forward to light candles um, in remembrance of our loved ones and so that'll be uh, next week. We are uh, in the midst of our stewardship emphasis it's called uh, Bind Us Together and we just marvel at the ways of all that we've gone through these last two years. <laughs> uh, how the Lord our God does mystically bind us together no matter where we are, no matter where we find ourselves, God is with us, God is present, and ministry continued. And, and how blessed we were. And so uh, we celebrate that, but we also look forward to what God is doing next. And we ask for you uh, to commit to being a part of what God is doing next here at Our Saviors. As part of this emphasis, we are inviting members of the church uh, to come forward and share a little bit of their story and perspective. And today, I'm, I'm honored to invite uh, Max Dodson, member of our church, our brother in Christ, executive director of Caritas. I enjoyed that chili Thursday. <laughs> I think it gave the Packers good luck, you know, so that was a lot of fun another fundraiser for Caritas last Thursday. I invite you to come forward, Max, and to share, share your story. Good morning, everybody. Um, when Pastor Tony asked me to do this, um, in light of everything that's going on uh, culturally in our community. Um, the first thought that came to my mind about stewardship was, do not be afraid. It's one of those phrases in our Bible that stays with me, because I'm constantly reminded, as long as I have faith in the Creator, that has given us the grace of salvation, I need not be afraid. Having said that, I also asked about how much time do I have? Pastor Tony pointed out, I have five minutes or so. I have my stopwatch. And it started. Um, do not be afraid. Things are happening. We are in an unknown circumstance in our lives. And we are here in this congregation because we have faith. Faith that through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice that we have been redeemed down through the ages from the moment he hung on that cross we have been saved through God's faith in us as broken human beings. We choose to be here. I choose to be here because I do not want to be afraid anymore. When I was young, and my faith was not nearly as strong as today, I spent a lot of time in fear. And now I place my faith 
in God and Jesus as my Savior. I still have moments of fear, but I give them up. So what does that have to do with stewardship? How can the word of God go out from this place if our doors close? How can we, as disciples of God, share our faith when we have no place to support each other? This is home. This is community. I'm part of this family, and I'm responsible to make sure that these doors are open, not just for us as members, but for our community when they are in need, when their fear grows so strong, they will need a place to go. We will be here for them, just as we are here for each other, and God is here for us. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to support this congregation with your time, your talents, and yes, our money. It's up to us to keep our doors open. And it's up to me not to be afraid to make that sacrifice. This is sanctuary, and not just for us as a congregation, because there's going to come a point where the general community, the secular community, is going to have so much fear. Where will they turn? In all likelihood, they will turn to God once again. We will be here for them as believers. We will welcome them because it is our faith that is the candle in darkness. I'm blessed to be part of Caritas. I have learned the responsibility of keeping doors open for those in need. For those who may not even know today that they are in need, but may be in the future. Keep the doors open, and in doing so, I am making my commitment to our congregation, to you. I will do what I can to keep these doors open so that we can share in God's love and send it out from here. Thank you. I invite you to please rise as we prepare our hearts now for worship through our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose
teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. You may be seated. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first lesson today is found in Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 46 responsively. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake, God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold, the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Our second lesson today is in Romans chapter 3. Now we all know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus, then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
As Jesus and his disciples and aloud out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Choices are a fact of life. It's how we live our lives with one another and here in society. The world around us presents us with the choices and we make them. Sometimes we even avoid them. But the choices remain. How we make those life choices will differ from person to person based on factors such as how we were raised to our own worldview of the society around us. However, the fact remains, choices will always be a part of our life. A popular board game was even created around the major life choices we all inevitably come to make in our lives. But sadly, real life is nothing like the game of life. The board game created in 1860 by Milton Bradley simulates a person's travels through their life, from college to retirement, with jobs, marriage, and possible children along the way, all resulting from a single choice and then an inevitable spin of the dial. Now, as we get older, we can come to realize that the game is meant to be purely satire because life really is not all easy or that laid out on a particular path that we will follow. The life we live does not just happen via that spin of a dial. We are forced to make choices every day that impact our life. Some big, some small, some that may have very little impact on our overall lives moving forward, and others that are truly life-changing and life-altering. It's funny, the game of life also comes with a convenient, nice set of instructions, an instruction manual. Real life certainly does not, although we often will pray to God that might it maybe. We have to choose almost right from the get-go at an early age. We choose our friends, whether to follow directions and be ready to accept the consequences when we don't. And as we get older, the choices become more complex and important. If and where to go to college. What type of vocation or career we are called to and ultimately choose to pursue. To maybe get married, start a family, to where you will live. These choices are the ones we make at pivotal times in our lives. We are also inundated with choices we have to sort out and make each and every day. In our consumer and media-driven society, we have more choices, more options on almost everything than any other time in history. From food options, where to shop, what and how to watch TV, to even how much sleep we choose to get or not get. And yes, I would be remiss if I did not include even what sports teams we may choose to follow. And I know some of you would say that there is no choice. It's the Cubs and the Bears, right? It's the right choice? It's a lot, always coming at us from all different directions. And it can be downright exhausting. Today, we commemorate Reformation Day. As Pastor Tony mentioned in the beginning, 504 years ago, on October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed 95 theses to the door of that church, Castle Church in Wittenberg, Germany, setting motion the reformation of the Christian church. Why the church door? Because in that time, that's where you posted everything that had to do with the community. 
that was where anything and everything was going to be seen by the community. The doors there in the picture are not the actual doors. Doors are there to commemorate what took place on that day as a constant reminder to those in that community of what began there. We are the heirs of that Reformation. And so we join with faithful Lutherans and Protestants all around the globe in honoring that historic event and all the movements, changes, and transitions that came from it. So how do we commemorate the Reformation? By believing in and caring about the same things that Luther and the Reformers that came before him and after him believed in and cared about. And foremost in that list is one word, justification. Everything else that we talk about in the Lutheran Church flows from, flows after, and supports this central, primary doctrine of justification. So what is it? Other than this morning, it's not a word we use often in the church. In fact, as I thought back, honestly, I'm not sure I specifically use that word when teaching in confirmation. Understand that this term justification simply means to declare righteous or right. So if you look back at our confession and forgiveness that we've used over the last couple of weeks and the affirmation that's there that's, that was spoken, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus. God makes you righteous. You could replace that word with God makes you justified. Understand that justification simply means to be declared right. Justification is how we, as broken people, held captive to sin, are made right, forgiven by God's unconditional gift of grace through our faith. And even though I never use the word directly, each one of the young people here to, who will be here later, who are affirming their baptism, faithfully understand it, as witnessed in each of their faith statements that they have written. And I encourage you to take a look at those when you leave today in between the two services. And so we land this morning on one of the most noted passages in the Bible on the subject of justification from Paul's letter to the Romans, the third chapter, which is our second reading for today, and summarized there in verse 28. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. There is awesome brilliance and clarity and sheer power in this passage. And it is the culmination of an argument that Paul lays out in chapters 1 and 2 of Romans and then continues into chapter 3. Paul preaches, or as one commentator on this text says, preaches like a prosecuting attorney, that all of us are guilty in God's eyes according to the standards of the law. Jews and Gentiles alike whether we have the Ten Commandments on tablets of stone like Israel did, or whether as Gentiles we simply have God's law written on our hearts, telling us that certain things are right, certain things are wrong, our consciences convicting us when we know or think we have messed up, made the wrong choice, and that it is to God who we are accountable. The fact of the matter is all people everywhere each one of us stands guilty in some way in God's courtroom. The law accuses us, convicts us, and rightly so. No matter how good and moral we have tried to live, we all fail. We all fall. None of us measures up all the time. But you know what? There is always good news. God's great and boundless, out of God's great and boundless love for us sinners, God puts forward God's own Son, Jesus Christ, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. The precious, priceless blood of the Holy Son of God is shed on our behalf, covering our sins on the seat of God's mercy. And all this is a gift. It is all by grace. God's undeserved favor, freely given. It's not a matter of what we do, our works. It's a matter of Christ's work for us. Redemption, salvation, forgiveness, or call it justification, 
the righteousness of God, our right standing before God. The thing is this, we can't earn it. We don't even have to choose it. We can only receive it. Receive it as a gift. That's what faith is. Simply receiving the free gift that God is giving all of us. The forgiveness of sins proclaimed victorious for us by Jesus' death on the cross. So what happens, though, when we aren't always as faithful as we should be? What happens when we inevitably make choices that result in something coming between us and God? For us today, again, 504 years after Martin Luther's very public declaration that began the Reformation, God knows that in the lives of God's people, there will always be things that try to pull us away from God. If you really think about it, our society alone is one that pulls away from a lot of things. Religion and God being just one of them, but perhaps the most important one. I have mentioned it before, but you only have to turn on the news or open Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook to see that the world around us pulls and tugs us towards all the things that may strain our relationship with God, not to mention one another. Things like want versus need, for example. It's not easy to turn away from the things that creep into our lives, displacing the things of God, but God welcomes us invites us into a relationship that renews constantly. See, among all of those choices we are presented with each day, one choice has already been made by God for us. God has chosen to love us and be in a relationship with all of us, a relationship centered on what God did for us, for all of God's people in the death on the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God chose us. We don't have to choose God. But how are we to respond? God already chose us, so the only choice we have as people of God is how we are going to live each day into that deep relationship. If we choose to live a life that celebrates our relationship with God, we do not do so halfway, but wholeheartedly. Renewing our own covenant begins with a litany of what God has done for us, saw us through that unexpected tragedy, calmed our anxiety, guided us through loss and grief. Then we are invited to live with God. We don't choose God, but we are instead being invited into a life with God. When we worship, when we pray, when we give of ourselves for others, when we see all people as equal, created and loved unconditionally by God, regardless of what society says, and when we take care of ourselves. God desires our whole selves, even when we become distracted by all of the other things, the other choices around us. God chose us. God chose the world from the very beginning. So we join the game of life each and every day, but without that silly spin of that dial. We are invited, we are called, we are welcomed into a life where we are free to be our authentic selves. No costume, no scary masks. Yes, even as today is Halloween. We are free to be who we are, to be present, to make mistakes, and be thankful for all that God has done and will continue to do in the amazing relationship God has with all of us. And for that, we can only say, Amen.
Together, let us confess the ancient faith of the church using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. That free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life you intend. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who seek to grow in faith and love of you. Guide teaching and learning in confirmation, small groups, Sunday school, youth groups, schools, seminaries, and universities. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. 
We pray for the young people of this congregation who affirm their baptism this day. We ask for your continued guidance and assured presence with them, their families, and all those whom they meet on their journey in life. May their hearts be open to sharing the unconditional love and grace granted to all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy house. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation and justice. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hearts through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. As the grains of wheat when scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our breath, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst, may we share the presence of your love. As the grains of wheat, when scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Mend our broken relationships and produce the fruits of love among your children. Accept the gifts you have first given us and unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer praise and thanks to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen, come Lord Jesus, amen, come Lord Jesus. Then now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba, as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst, come, the table is ready. Thanks be to God. For our communion distribution this morning, we will have uh, two tables, uh, one on each side aisle in which you'll come down the side aisle and receive communion, a packet that contains both the wafer and the grape juice. And then you, re you take that packet back to your pew where you can consume it or uh, you can uh, take it home with you. Uh, if you need any extras, uh, there are extras on the tray by the, um, by the offering plates. All right, so come, all is ready.
I'd like you to please rise if you are able. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and bring you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our closing song. the living word dwells within you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>